Hello, fellow medievalists. It's Natalie Finkerhead from the University of Toronto Press. It's five o'clock here in Toronto, which means only one thing, wine hour. So to all of you medievalists, we hope you're doing well. We hope you're staying healthy. Uh, and we look so forward to seeing all of you again uh, next year. We wanted though to take this opportunity to talk about some of the new books that we've been working on this year. Uh, and these would have been the books that we obviously would have brought to show you at Kalamazoo. So as you know, we have a selection of monographs done by my esteemed colleague, Suzanne Rancourt, and then some books for your medieval studies courses. First we have William Chester Jordan's Servant of the Crown and Steward of the Church, The Career of Philippe of Cahors. Uh, together with many radical reformers in 13th century France, Philippe of Cahors was a major figure in both secular and ecclesiastical government during the reign of Louis IX. Servant of the Crown and Steward of the Church is the first comprehensive study of his remarkable career, a career that took him to some of the loftiest and most powerful offices in the realm. Moving on. Uh, a very important book here, Henry Daniel's uh, Liber Uri Crucerum. This is the first complete edition of the earliest known work of academic medicine written in Middle English. Working in the late 1370s, Daniel combines authoritative medicine from written sources with his own personal experience and created a text that stands out for its linguistic originality, intellectual scope, and wide circulation. This book describes medieval humoral theory, anatomy, physiology, disease, medical astronomy, reproductive processes, and, and more, all within the broader context of uroscopic diagnosis. Next up, David Wax's uh, Medieval Iberian Crusade Fiction and the Mediterranean World. Here, uh, Wax reads the crusader fiction of Christian and Muslim Iberian authors against the backdrop of Mediterranean history. He includes new readings of well-known medieval texts, or, such as the Libro del uh, Caballero Zifar and the Tirant Lo Blanc, as well as other little-known texts. His study brings together texts written in Arabic, Latin, Catalan, and Castilian, reading them in the context of Mediterranean culture of crusade and chivalric fiction. Uh, Kincaid's The Life and Times of Infante Manuel of Castile. This is the first and only book-length biography of Prince Manuel, the youngest brother of King Alfonso X, the wise and progenitor of the longest ruling dynasty in the history of Spain. Though historians of medieval Iberia have always recognized the important role played by Manuel during the turbulent years of Alfonso's rule from 1252 to 1284, no attempt was made to chronicle and define this influence because it was assumed that there was insufficient evidence to justify such an endeavor. However, systemic and persistent archival research over the past two decades has uncovered a large number of original documents, which effectively characterize the prince and establish him as a major player during Alfonso's troubled regime. The Cartulary Chronicle of Bez has been edited only once before in the 17th century and then only in an abbreviated form. The edition by which scholars know this Cartulary Chronicle, if they know it at all, uh, is through an 1875 reprinting of the 17th century edition, a reprinting attached almost as an afterthought to an edition of the Chronicle of St. Benin of D Dijon. Uh, from which the Bez Chronicler borrowed heavily. But he did not simply reproduce it, he reworked the materials from Dijon to give his monastery the prominence he thought that it deserved. This full edition of the work thus may tell us little new about the history of early medieval Burgundy, but it is revelatory of how a 12th century monk set about creating a useful past for his house. Contarini, the Republic of Venice, at a time when social scientists are increasingly focusing on why nations fail and why democracies die, Filippo Sabetti turns to the opposite argument. What makes institutions endure? He retrieves for modern readers Gasparo Contarini's 16th century account of the Republic of Venice that helps to understand what made Venice to this day the longest lived self-constituted republic. Uh, and finally, from our scholarly monograph list, McGrady's The Writer's Gift or the Patron's Pleasure, 
the literary economy in late medieval France. This study challenges conventional approaches to medieval patronage by arguing that there is a fundamental difference between the solicited and unsolicited text. It further shows that the late medieval book community was keenly aware of this difference and often addressed this issue in the framing accounts of their work. This is the first book to engage with current discussions about patronage by turning to what medieval writers had to say on the issue and in contrast to earlier works. Let us now move on to our course texts, the uh, perennial favorite, A Short History of the Middle Ages. And my understanding was actually that Barbara Rosenwein was gonna be at Kalamazoo and, and I'm sorry to have missed her. Uh, however, we still have this one for your fall courses. As many of you know, this is the market leader in uh, the medieval study survey using a comparative approach of Western, Byzantium, and Muslim experience to give students a more rounded version of uh, the history of the Middle Ages. And of course, the accompanying reader reading the Middle Ages that fits very, very nicely with the overview. Uh, I believe, yes, package pricing is available. So if you want to use both of them in a course, perhaps even with the William Chester Jordan that I talked about before, uh, please just let us know and uh, we can talk to you about package pricing. I'm so excited about this next book. Look at this, everyone. Medieval Warfare by the two uh, leaders in the area, Kelly DeVries and Michael Livingston. So uh, this is going to be the most comprehensive reader on medieval warfare. And what, what I really like about this book is it, while it talks about all of the various battles and all the readings that you would expect to be in here, it also takes a more, I guess, more somber approach where it talks about uh, the impact of real war on real people. And this really comes out in the general introduction. If you're teaching medieval warfare, this is the book for you. Uh, another one in our uh, readings in medieval culture and civilization uh, series. For those of you I'm sure most of you are familiar with this series, but if you're not, uh, Paul Dutton has been editing a series of medieval primary sources for years now. I can't remember what we're up to here. 22. Uh, all of which contain a general introduction and then primary sources. These are super helpful in courses. This one is John Romano's Medieval Traveler and Travelers, uh, looking at how medieval uh, people went from place to place. Again, if you're teaching a course, Medieval Travel and Travelers, this is gonna be the book for you. Finally, on the course side, The Viking Age, Need I Say More? So this is the third edition of our very successful Viking Reader by Angus Somerville and Andrew McDonald. What the authors have done is as, as uh, you go through different eras and different centuries, how the Vikings have been misused, uh, abused, portrayed in the culture of that time period. That to me, I think is, uh, is really going to be of interest to your students to see how the Vikings have been portrayed uh, throughout time. Uh, two other books I just wanted to mention on the higher education side. We have a wonderful book called The Devil's Historians coming out by Paul Sturdivant and Amy Kaufman about how the Middle Ages have been appropriated uh, by extremists. Also, Herb Kessler uh, has published the new edition of uh, his medieval art book. And so if you teach a course on medieval art, please be in touch with us and we can send you an exam copy. Thank you for this. Uh, again, next year in Kalamazoo. Take care.